Hello, welcome to my next video. I had a request to make a video uh, showing how I make my turns and corners. So I'm going to do a quick little video showing the various techniques that I use, uh, what's important in, in how you make these cuts a lot of times is which side is waste and which side you want you're keeping. And in some examples, some, some conditions, you don't have waste uh, in, a, in an inlay a relief cut uh, and, and often if you're doing a segmentation or something like that then you have two layers and one layer the waste is one side and on the other layer it's on on the other side so there are instances where you really don't have a waste you just have to cut your line but I'm gonna try to demonstrate all those possibilities as best I can here is how I do it and we'll start out with just a, a straight uh, 90 degree turn uh, in this case, the way I have this one, like if, um, if I have a pattern that has this situation, I try to make it where it matches up with uh, two edges of my material. And in a case like that, I like to cut as often as possible. I like my, my cuts into a corner from two directions if I can do that. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to demonstrate that real quick. As you can see in that situation, that was the waste. I just cut it out and got it out of the way. And that makes you a nice clean corner right there. So in this next one, I still got the waste on the same side, but in this instance, we're not going to have, a, 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 pretend we don't have an edge we can cut into. So we're gonna go from it like this. Now, to cut in there to that corner, you don't want to go too deep, you just want to go too even with this line across. At this point, I'm going to turn the material. So there's two things that I, that I do at this point. When I get ready to turn, I do not turn my material unless I have a large hole for the blade to spin in or unless the blade is moving up and down. Do not turn it, I don't turn it unless the blade is moving up and down. It allows the blade to move its way through the material. So in this case, when I get there, I just kind of stop. And as I turn, I want to keep the pressure a little bit against the back of the blade so you don't do it. You can jump in here. This is an easy material to cut. It'd be easy for it to jump in past the line. But normally when you're cutting, you're keeping pressure against the teeth. At this point, I'm going to try to keep a little bit against the back of the blade. And that's something you just practice, you do without even thinking. So, we got another one here. Now I've got the waste on the inside. So I'm assuming this is, this would be like an external cut. And I'm going to make that sharp. You do the same thing what I just did. There's multiple ways of doing it. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little spin out into the... Uh, I'm not the, the waste is on the inside. I'm going to come in and I'm going to cut me a little bit of a hole right there. You do this on either an inside or an outside. Sometimes I'll just go into that waste. Hog me out a little space there. Make sure, make sure I got it cleaned out. And then you can turn it. That's just one way of doing it. Now on this one, the waste is on the outside. So you have multiple options. You can do the same thing I did here or here. But in this case, I'm going to spin out into the waste. So that's, that's one little easy way to do it. But if you don't have waste, you can't do that. you got to do something uh, just like I did over here. Just stop and take your time and make that turn. 
so you don't cut into either side uh, if you don't have waste. So here we have a little, little more oblique angle and the waste is going to be on the outside so we can do that the same way but what I really like to do and when I can is I like to come in from both sides if I can. Now, I can do the same thing here that I did over here, come over here and come in right there. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a back out and back in. I go in, make sure you got that cleaned out real good to the point. And make sure you got the sawdust out. Now, this is the waste side. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to spin this and back the blade in. But you want to spin where the cutting part of your blade is on the waste side. And again, have your blade moving when you make that spin. It's the same thing again. I'll demonstrate that again. And on a thicker material, you need to work up in there and make sure you get the sawdust out of the way. Because it'll back in behind your blade and you'll have to turn around again to clean it out. Okay, so there's those cuts. Got some more made out here. And what I really like to do, uh, on a point like this, either like to come from both directions this way or you can come the other way. This is the waste side. Uh, Say so you have a, this is part of a bigger pattern that goes all the way around, but we'll pretend we cut all the way around. like to make that my entry and my exit point. So now you got one that the waste is on the inside. So we're going to cut in from here. Now you can, if you didn't have waste at all, let's say you didn't have waste at all, you can do what I did on the 40, on the 45 degree, 90 degree angle. Uh, you just have to be very careful with it. That's, in that case, you just Take your time, put the pressure against the back of the blade slightly as you turn, and allow that blade to cut its way around. Uh, you can do that. I, it doesn't get as good of a... Uh, a good, as good of a cut sometimes. I might leave a little bit on one side. In that case, I come back and I just clean it out. And I use the edge of the blade almost like a piece of sandpaper. Now when I have an internal cut with a sharp angle like that, let me move the blade into that hole. I always like to drill my hole close to a point, either external or internal. In this case it's going to be an internal point. internal sharp cut there but when I drill the hole like I say I try to get it close to a point like this and I'll, I'll go right to that hole with my cut my first cut I'm in the waste that way it gives me room to operate in either direction Now 
that gives me a good sharp point right there. Um, if I didn't want to go all that way around, I could turn around and back in again. But if I can come back from the other direction, I prefer to do that. It makes a much cleaner cut. Now I'm going to let me swatch, switch pieces here. And I'm going to show you what you can run into with a circle, both internally and externally. And it, it, it's not just circles, anything with a curved surface, curved cut that you're cutting into the curve. Let me show you what I'm talking about. We're going to cut the waist is the internal part of the circle on this one. So what I like to do in this is I like to go right as close to directly on that line as I can. And then I treat that like a 90 degree cut. When I get it back around to this point, I like to proceed very slowly and let the blade just kind of eat away. And that way you won't leave a little uh, uh, piece sticking up on the inside of that uh, uh, circle. It'd be uh, Try to make it as smooth as possible. If you go in at an angle, it's more like the blade will flip over it when you get to it and leave some on the inside. It's not a big deal, but I just like to keep things as clean as I can. Just let that blade work its way into that spot. Now I'm going to demonstrate that the same way on the outside. It's the same, same principle. But you see it didn't leave a didn't leave a, a little spot there where the blade matched up. the same thing it's just on the outside of the circle get back to this point like again just kind of slow down don't put too much pressure on the blade let it just eat its way through the line it'll give you a nice clean cut at that point and I want to show this was another instance uh, of a, an example of a really sharp point now what I would do on this pattern is this where I would start. I would come in right here and I'd work my way around and then come back out here. Or I would come in here, go down the beak one way, come back out, go down the beak the other way. I'd get that as sharp as I could. And then you could decide, depending on what's ahead in the pattern, uh, what, how you want to proceed. Because you've got to cut in all these. And what I do with those is I just back out. And I'll do that real quick. I don't turn around when I'm in there because that's called veining. I don't want to get any holes in there if I can help it. And you get right here, you got an advantage because the veining comes off as an angle. It's easy to get into it. But then, these have no waste. This is a line with no waste on either side. So this is where I'm going to have to very easily turn, very carefully turn. Now, 
now. And I made it in, I made all those turns. Now I'm going to go out without turning the blade around. Now you line back up and you just go right on with your cut. But that's what I do with each one of these veins. I go in and back out. Now, in this case, it actually would be better to come in from this side than your angles for these pieces. Those are things you can look ahead of before you start cutting. But that would be better to come on the top of that beak and come around this way. I would do the back end cut here. And uh, out here, I would just flip around the edge of that wing and come back in. And then I would come out here and turn around and go out to the tip of the wing again. And if you're coming in from this direction, it's easier to get up in that veining. That's not a sharper turn, and you just back out, and just like backing a car out of a driveway. But that's some of the simple techniques that I use. Some of those I've learned by reading workbooks or various types of books, or I've watched videos, or I've just learned it on my own. Most of those are things I've watched and developed myself for my own use. Uh, it's not necessarily the only way. It may not even be the best way, but that's the way I do most of my cuts. That's kind of a general breakdown on it. Uh, main thing is, when you make a turn, try to keep the pressure against the back of the blade in the turn and keep the blade moving up and down. Allow it to work its way around. And you don't want to put too much pressure against it, the front of it, because in a, in a, if you're in a real thin material, this is not super thin, but if you get like an eighth inch, if you're making that turn, it could jump out in your material real easily. So I try to keep the pressure against the back of the blade as I make that turn so that it's not cutting a lot. I just want the blade to work its way around to get lined up with the next direction. So I hope those are helpful to you. And if I didn't cover something you wanted to see, well, say so, and I'll try to make a short little video to cover it or try to answer your question in some way. And if this is helpful to you, hit the like button and hit the subscribe button if you, uh, you think you could use more of these types of things. Uh, and I'll try to answer any questions you have and, and keep some good information out there for you. Uh, again, this is my techniques. They're not necessarily the right or the best, but they're my techniques and that's how I make my cuts. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next video.